On this worksheet, we're going to be calculating the pH of a couple of acids that are diprotic, meaning that they have more than one hydrogen atom that can be lost in an acid-base reaction. When you have a hydrogen atom that has, or excuse me, when you have an acid that has multiple hydrogen atoms, you will get a Ka value for every one of the hydrogen atoms that can be lost in an acid-base reaction. So this acid has a Ka1 value and also a Ka2 value. The Ka1 value corresponds to the loss of the first hydrogen, and the Ka2 value corresponds to the loss of the second hydrogen. If you want to calculate the pH of, the, of this particular acid, you have to take into consideration the loss of both of those hydrogen atoms. We're going to do this by creating a series of ice tables. So first we're going to set up an ice table for the dissociation of the first hydrogen atom. That means we want to write a balanced equation, H2CO3. I'm going to leave the AQs off of this. H2CO3 plus H2O, and we want to show this reacting and losing just one of its hydrogen H plus ions. So initially we're going to be making HCO3 minus because we're losing an H plus, we're losing one of the hydrogens, and we're also taking the charge down from zero to a minus one. And we're going to make an ice table here. Um, our initial concentration is 0.25. Uh, we initially we have no products. This is a minus x plus x plus x. At equilibrium, we have 0.25 minus x, and we're just going to assume that it's just 0.25. We also have x and x. This is not telling us to calculate the pH, it's telling us to calculate the concentration of everything in equilibrium. So that means we want to know how much do we have of these guys over here. To solve for x, we're going to use an equilibrium expression. This is going to be Ka1. The value of Ka1 is 4.2 times 10 to the minus 7, and this is going to be calculated by taking our products over our reactant x squared over 0.25. Um, so I am going to solve for x just really quick. I'm going to go 4.2 times 10 to the minus 7, multiply that by 0.25, and then take the square root. The value of x is 3.24 times 10 to the minus 7. So this means at equilibrium, my H2CO3 concentration is 0.25. I'm just reading this off of the ice table. And also my HCO3 minus concentration is 3.24 times 10 to the minus 7. That's my X value. And my H3O plus concentration is the same. 3.24 times 10 to the minus 7. Now, the next thing that we want to do is set up an ice table for the second dissociation of H+. We're going to be starting, for the second dissociation, we're going to be starting with HCO3-. So after the first H+, came off, which is what we have in the, in the first equation here, we're left with HCO3-. Now we want to see that second H+, come off. So we'll be re reacting with H2O again. And our products, because HCO3- minus is an acid, we'll be making CO3 2 minus. We're losing a hydrogen, and we're also losing an H+. Plus. So our charge is going down from negative 1. It's going down to negative 2. And we're also making H3O+. Plus. The initial amounts of, of this guy right here, like we don't have in the problem statement, it's not telling us what the initial amount is. The initial amount of HCO3 minus is coming from the last ice table. In the last ice table, we calculated how much HCO3 minus was going to be produced in this reaction, and that's what we're going to be using down here as our initial amount. So our initial amount of H CO3 minus is 3.2, 3.24 times 10 to the minus 7. And again, that was what came from the previous ice table. Also, in the previous ice table, that reaction produced a little bit of H3O plus. And so we're starting with that down here as well. So we have an initial amount of H3O plus that was produced in the first reaction. Uh, we're going to use a minus x, plus x, plus x, 
And at equilibrium, we're going to assume x is small, so 3.4 times 10 to the minus 7. We're just going to assume that that's, you know, 3.4 times 10 to the minus 7. And same over here, 3.24 times 10 to the minus 7 plus x. We're going to still assume that x is really small, and we can just ignore it relative to 3.24 times 10 to the minus 7. Now we're going to recalculate everything, recalculate um, what, what uh, is the value of x. So this time we're using Ka2. Ka2 is going to be our products. So x and 3.24 times 10 to the minus 7 divided by our reactant, 3.24 times 10 to the minus 7. Notice that they cancel each other out. Ka2, the numerical value of Ka2 is just going to be our value of x. Let me go back up to the top. What is Ka2? Ka2 is 4.8 times 10 to the minus 11. 4.8 times 10 to the minus 11, that is equal to x. Recalculate the concentration of everything in equilibrium. So based on this ice table, the concentration of HCO3 minus and also the concentration of H3O plus is 3.24 times 10 to the minus 7. From this ice table, the concentration of CO3 2 minus is equal to 4.8 times 10 to the minus 11. The concentration of CO3 2 minus is X, which we calculated right here. Just would double check that I copied that correctly. Ka2, yes. And also, even though it doesn't show up in this ice table, the concentration of H2CO3, that's still a factor here. H2CO3 is point, uh, 2.5, 0.25 molar. The last thing we want to do here is calculate the pH of the solution. The pH of the solution is the negative log of the H3O plus concentration, which is the negative log of 3.24 times 10 to the minus 7. You might be noticing that we really don't need the, the um, second ice table to... Hold on. When I turn my calculator on, it looks like I might have might have copied something wrong. I might have a calculator error here. Let me just let me just double check this math up here. 4.2 times 10 to the minus 7 times 0.25. Take the square root. I got a I got a bad exponent up here. I'm not sure how I did that. This is 3.24 times 10 to the minus 4, which you probably already know. 3.24 times 10 to the minus 4. I don't know where that 7 came from. 3.24 times 10 to the minus 4. And also over here. And that's going to change this one right there also. But it doesn't change this number because that these numbers cancel each other out. It does affect this over here. Okay, so we're going back to our pH calculation. Um, so like I was saying, you might be noticing that you don't really need the second ice table if all you have to do is calculate the pH, and that is accurate. Because in the second ice table, the H3O plus concentration is not changing from what it was in the first table. Uh, our pH is 3.49 for this solution. Let's go do a second example and hopefully this one I won't make a mistake. Uh, second example, we have a 0.5 molar H2S solution. We want to calculate the pH of the solution and we also want to calculate the concentrations of all of the different things that are in equilibrium. So we're going to start by writing our first dissociation reaction. Again, I'm going to leave the states off, the AQs and the Ls just to save space. In the first reaction, we're losing one hydrogen from the H2S, and the charge is going from neutral down to a minus one, and we're making H3O+. In our ice table, we start initially with 0.5 molar H2S, and we have no products. We have minus X plus X plus X for the change, and at equilibrium, we have 0.5 minus X, which we assume is just 0.5, 
and we also have x and x. To solve for x, we're going to use Ka1 because this is the first hydrogen coming off. Ka1 is 9.5 times 10 to the minus 8. And that is calculated by taking our products, x squared, over our reactant, 0.5. The value of x is 9.5 times 10 to the minus 8 times 0.5, and then take the square root of that. X is 2.18 times 10 to the minus 4. That is our HS concentration, HS minus, and it's also our H3O plus concentration. And our H2S concentration is 0.5. Now we're going to make our second ice table. For the second ice table, we're going to start with HS minus, HS minus, and that's going to react with a second water molecule. Uh, the HS minus is going to lose its last hydrogen, so it's going to go down to S2 minus, loses its hydrogen, and then also loses a plus one charge. And our other product is H3O plus. The initial amount of H2S is X, which is 2.18 times 10 to the minus four. We don't have any S minus. We haven't made any S minus yet. Our initial amount of H3O plus is also X, also 2.18 times 10 to the minus four. The change here is minus X plus X plus X. At equilibrium, we assume the value of X is super tiny. So at equilibrium, it's gonna be 2.18 times 10 to the minus four and X and 2.18 times 10 to the minus four. To solve for x in this equation, we need to use Ka2 because this is our second equation. Ka2 is going to be our products, x times 2.18 times 10 to the minus 4 divided by our reactant, 2.18 times 10 to the minus 4. Our Ka2 value is... 1 times 10 to the minus 19. And that's equal to all of this right here. The 2.18 times 10 to the minus 4 cancels out. And so our x in this second ice table is just 1 times 10 to the minus 19. And that is equal to our S minus concentrations, S2 minus concentration. So in terms of answering the question that says calculate the concentrations of everything, S2 minus is 1 times 10 to the minus 19. H2S is 0.5. HS minus and H3O plus are both 2.18 times 10 to the minus 4. Also, this problem is ask, asking us to calculate the pH of the solution. The pH of the solution is the negative log of the H3O plus concentration. The H3O plus concentration is right here, 2.18 times 10 to the negative 4. Negative log of 2.18 times 10 to the negative 4, which is 3.66.